I'm Miles O'Brien. That was the Space Shuttle, and you're watching Boing Boing Video. Welcome to Boing Boing Video. I am here with legendary space and science reporter, intergalactic badass, Miles O'Brien. Hey, Miles. Hey, Jenny. Thanks for the introduction. I appreciate it. It's all downhill from here, no doubt. But I appreciate it. I do. Very good. Well, we've had the honor of showcasing some of your post-CNN video explorations. It's, it's really interesting to see all of this work that you're doing online. Yeah, you know, just because I don't work for a big uh, mainstream media outlet doesn't mean I stop telling stories, right? You know, it's, there's a lot of ways to uh, skin a cat these days. And um, the Internet, is it, it's just fascinating how many avenues there are. It's the great leveling of the playing field. Well, I've just been having a ball. The freedom is amazing. The adventures you're having have been a lot of fun to watch. Now, we featured two of them this week already, uh, one in which you're following the adventures of uh, an astronaut, Scott Parazinski, who is attempting to summit Mount Everest. Yeah, he, that, that's a fascinating tale. You know, last year, he got all the way to the final camp, the, the, the high camp, as they call it, the fourth camp number four, woke up on the morning he would have gone to the summit, and he had ruptured his disc. Wow. You know, his back had been bothering him. He didn't know how much it had been bothering him. He woke up. He could barely walk. He had to hobble down the mountain. That's no easy task. And there's not like you're going to call in, you know, a helicopter to come pick you up. Right. And made his way back. He approached me around Christmas time this past year and said, you know, I'd really like to go back. I don't have the money. And I said, you know, let's put something together here. We'll make it a story and we'll get some sponsorship. So we got the, the good people at Spot uh, Satellite Messenger to help us out. And he's there, and he's telling his story, and he is on his way. And, and we hope, hopefully by the time people are watching this, it will have already happened. So the other story that we ran from you this week involved the Hubble telescope repairs that are happening up in space. You're the only reporter to have ever gone into NASA's neutral buoyancy lab. You're basically diving into space. Yeah, you know, a six million gallon swimming pool in Houston, uh, big enough to hold huge space shuttle cargo bay, and of course a Hubble. And so John Grunsfeld, who is the most veteran of all spacewalkers on the Hubble, an astrophysicist and the guy they call the Hubble hugger, uh, we, were, we were kind of brainstorming. How are we going to tell this story this time? It's the fifth Hubble repair mission. You know, we've, we've, we've told the story any number of ways. I came to the conclusion the way to do it was for me to come and watch him and interview him as he was doing his job. So it just so happened we were there this day. He was doing the most complicated task of all something that was not designed for the inflated gloved hand of a spacewalker to do, tiny little screws, unscrewing them, fixing this advanced cameras for surveys. He sweated this one many, many times, and all the practice paid off because the other day in space on Saturday went off without a hit. And watching him do that was such a thrill for me. It gave me such a perspective on how difficult it is to do that in space. So, Miles, the final spacewalk happened this week. Yeah, it, uh, last spacewalk on Hubble ever, ever. This is the end of an era. It was Monday. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's such a bittersweet moment. I've been listening to all the astronomers talking about how, you know, wonderful the telescope is, how this Perils of Pauline story is now kind of turned into Benjamin Button, and this, this, this uh, telescope is better than it ever has been since it was launched, and on and on and on, and five, ten years of great astronomy ahead. But... For those of us who, you know, are interested in human beings going into space, it's a wistful moment because it's the end of a wonderful era uh, from 1990 onward when it was launched and it had blurry vision, had to be fitted with eyeglasses, essentially. We have watched a drama unfold in space, five separate missions where human beings have gone up there and enhanced our robotic capability for understanding our world around us. And it's just, uh, it's too bad it's over, we're going to miss it. What's next for you? We've been talking about some other uh, technology adventures for you ahead. I'm really fascinated by sustainable transportation ideas. I, I know you know that. And yeah. I really think that it's high time that people have access to plug-in electric vehicles. You know, the whole story of general, you know, who killed the electric car and General Motors foray into the electric car, it bothers me because if they stuck with that, think of where we'd be right now. Well, I've been working with a guy by the name of Peter Arnell who's actually helping bring out a, a neighborhood electric vehicle called the Peapod Mobility. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not the end-all solution. It's, a short, you know, it's, a, it, it's for short range and, and lower speed, but it's a really cool 
four-seat electric car, which makes a lot of sense for going to get a drug of milk as opposed to firing up that gas-guzzling SUV. And, and I think maybe people are finally ready for this. We drove, we drove, drove it around Manhattan the other day, and, and the response was tremendous. People were like, I want this. This is so cool. So we're going to take it out to L.A., see what people think about it out there. I suspect it could be a real hit and a good kind of gap filler until we have real electric vehicles. Now, Miles, we're hoping to feature some of that video on Boing Boing Video as soon as that's done. Where else can people find your work in your ongoing online adventures? Well, I guess, you know, you can always follow me on my Twitter feed, which is at Miles O'Brien. That's one good place. And, and Jenny, you've done a great job adding to my <laughs> followers. I appreciate that. And uh, but I've got my kind of my home base now is at True Slant, which is a, uh, it's, a it's kind of a startup um, blog aggregations thing, kind of, kind of like Huffington Post is. With, with a lot of uh, journalists and, and reporters from various walks of life who are all kind of congregating in, in, in the place. Yeah. And the idea is to hopefully one day, you know, get enough critical mass to sell some meds and actually try to monetize this somehow. Right. In any case, so I've set up shop there, and uh, you can also reach me at www.milesobrien.com, no apostrophe, and that'll get you to my True Slant site, or trueslant.com forward slash Miles O'Brien. And, um, you know, I'm going to be blogging about this and, and electric cars and space and talked a little bit about that awful crash in Buffalo because, you know, right. I like aviation things. And, and um Love to uh, have people drop by and see what I'm up to and, and continue my dialogue. Who needs, who needs a big cable network to talk to people, right? Couldn't agree with you more. Miles O'Brien, thank you very much. No, you're, you're most welcome, Jenny. Thank you.